March Madness is truly one of the most special sporting events every single year. From buzzer beaters to massive upsets to straight up Cinderella stories, it seems to produce some of the most powerful moments and storylines for the world of sports year in and year out. This is truly one of the most special times of year if you're a sports fan. So today in this video, we're going to dive into just how far each seed has advanced in the NCAA tournament. What's the worst seed to ever win a championship? How about the worst seed to ever reach a final four? Get ready to unlock some memories you truly forgot you even had. A quick shout out to Stathead for this video. I was able to use their game finder tool to confirm and verify all statistics. And also before we begin, I'm going to do my best to show game footage, but the NCAA loves to falsely copyright claim videos. My video from last year got wrongly taken down before being reinstated by YouTube 30 days later. Simply put, they don't care and they will abuse the system. So with that being said, the NCAA started seeding teams back in 19. 1979, but in 1985, the tournament expanded to 64 teams. A play-in game between two 16 seeds was established in 2001, and in 2011, the first four was introduced and the tournament expanded to 68. Since it's pretty obvious one and two seeds have done fairly well, I figured I'd give you some percentages to start. A one seed has made the national championship all but seven seasons since 1971, which is a whopping success rate of 83.7%. A number one seed has also won a championship in 26 of those 36 appearances, with Kansas being the last to do so in 2022. But the most interesting fact I had for the one seeds is that only four times since 1979 have all four number one seeds missed the final four. 1980, 2006, 2011, and last season, 2023. But what's even crazier is that 2023, for the first time ever, we didn't even have a one seed reach the Elite Eight. Surprisingly enough, two seeds haven't fared as well as you think they may have in tournament history. They've reached a title game in just 17 of 43 seasons, and only seven of them have ever won it all. With only one since the year 2000, the 2016 Villanova Wildcats in one of the greatest national title games of all time. After North Carolina guard Marcus Page hit a double clutch three-pointer to tie the game, Chris Jenkins from Villanova drained a three as time expired. It was one of the most memorable sequences and shots in college basketball history. 12 three seeds have made the national title in tournament history with five of them winning it all. The last one to make a title game was Texas Tech in 2019, led by former number six overall pick Jarrett Culver. But the last three seed to win it all was none other than 2011 UConn, led by Kemba Walker. This is where the nickname Cardiac Kemba came about. Beginning as the ninth seed in the Big East tournament, UConn would go on to win five games in five days, clinching the Big East title, including this iconic Kemba Walker step back jumper in the quarterfinals to take down the one seed pit. And then in the NCAA tournament, they defeat Bucknell, Cincinnati, San Diego State, Arizona, Kentucky, and finally Butler winning the national title as Kemba averaged 23.5 points per game, six rebounds, and 5.6 assists while playing 38.5 minutes per game. It was one of the best runs and stories we've seen from a team in recent memory. Four four seeds have made a national title game, splitting them going two and two. The two losses were 2013 Michigan, led by Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway Jr., and then 96 Syracuse. And the two four seed winners were 97 Arizona and just last season in 2023 Connecticut, who made history becoming the first national champion to win each game in the tournament by 13 or more points. Just like the four seeds, a total of four number five seeds have made a national championship. But unlike the fours none of them have been able to get the job done most notably just last season number five san diego state would fall by double digits to yukon and five seeded butler in 2010 who are definitely the most famous of this bunch led by gordon hayward butler came this close to being the first five seed to ever win a championship with gordon hayward throwing up a half court shot that was this close to going in and probably becoming the greatest shot of all time versus number one seed duke this video is brought to you by underdog fantasy with the high chance that the NCAA is going to copyright this video. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you use my code hardwood for a 100% deposit match up to hundred dollars, they're running a new customer special from now until Friday. Nikola Jokic needs just one point. Six seeds have made the national title three times. 1992 Michigan, which was the Fab Five's freshman year, who were blown out by Christian Leitner's Duke, and then two winners. Firstly, 1983 North Carolina 
State, an absolutely iconic run led by their coach, Jimmy Valvano. In improbable fashion, they would defeat the number one seed, Houston, nicknamed Phi Slamma Jamma, and led by Hakeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. It was one of the most legendary runs in NCAA history. If you haven't seen the 30 for 30 on Jimmy V and this team, go check it out. And our other six seed to win a national title was none other than the 1988 Kansas Jayhawks, who are also one of the greatest stories in NCAA tournament history. And yes, this was Danny and the Miracles, led by senior forward Danny Manning, who was an absolute stud, averaging 27 and 9 throughout the tournament, finishing as the Naismith Player of the Year. 88 Kansas truly deserves its own video as well, but all we'll say is they ended up playing Oklahoma in the title game, winning 83 to 79 after losing twice to them in the regular season. Four seven seeds have made the final four in tournament history, including most recently 2017 South Carolina and 2015 Michigan State. But only 2014 UConn would advance to the national title game and win it in doing so, defeating eight seed Kentucky in a bizarre championship. Led by Shabazz Napier, who averaged 21.2, 5.5, and four and a half assists, Shabazz would lead UConn to its second national title in four seasons. There have been five eight seeds to make a national title game in tournament history. Most recently, the 2022 North Carolina Tar Heels. If you remember this team, they got hot at the right time. And interestingly enough, three key players from this team will be playing in this year's tournament. Armando Baycott and RJ Davis for number one seed UNC, and then Caleb Love, who now plays for the number two seed Arizona Wildcats. Two other notable runs were Julius Randle's 2014 Kentucky team we mentioned earlier, losing to seven seed UConn, and 2011 Butler, led by Shelvin Mack and Matt Howard, after Gordon Hayward declared for the NBA draft the prior season. But out of this list of five eight seeds, only one would be successful in winning a national championship, marking themselves as the lowest seed to ever win a national championship. Who did so, you may ask? The 1985 Villanova Wildcats. Similarly, to the 1983 NC State team, this game is considered one of the greatest upsets in NCAA history. Villanova matched up against Patrick Ewing's Georgetown Hoyas, a team they had lost to twice in the regular season. Nicknamed the perfect game, Villanova would shoot 79% from the field including 9 of 10 in the second half, going 22 of 28 for the game. Unfortunately for the nine seeds, none have ever made a national title game. Three, however, have made a final four. 1979 Pennsylvania, 2013 Wichita State, which you may remember, they're one of the more popular Final Four runs in recent memory. This team was led by Clee Anthony Early, Malcolm Armstead, and Carl Hall. And while Ron Baker and Fred Van Vliet were on the team and definitely contributed, they were not nearly as much of contributors as they were in the following season when Wichita State went 35-1 and but got upset in the second round. The 2013 squad that made the Final Four would upset Gonzaga with Kelly Olynyk in the second round before falling 72-68 to a Louisville team that ended up winning the national title that year. And then the last nine seed to make a Final Four is last year's Florida Atlantic Owls. Led by John L. Davis and Elijah Martin, the Owls actually are an eight seed in this year's tournament as well with pretty much everybody returning. The craziest part about this run from last season is they were this close to losing their first round matchup versus Memphis. The Tigers had the ball 65-64 with 11 seconds left on the clock when star player Kendrick Davis would turn the ball over. FAU would then win on a last second layup. And that's a perfect microcosm for how crazy March Madness is. One mistake can go from a first round exit to a final four appearance. The 2016 Syracuse Orange are the only 10 seed to ever make a final four. And the wildest part about this team is that most bracketologists didn't even have them in the tournament field. Unfortunately, this remarkable run was ended by Marcus Page and the North Carolina Tar Heels, which we mentioned earlier, lost to Villanova in the national title game. While 11 10 seeds have made the Elite Eight, there's only one really worth talking about, and that's the 2008 Davidson Wildcats. Led by babyface Stephen Curry, Steph was not the household name you think of today coming into this NCAA tournament. He was putting up great numbers, averaging 25.9 points per game, but unless you were a college basketball diehard, you didn't know what this Davidson team was potentially capable of. In their first round matchup, Davidson found themselves down five at half to seven seed Gonzaga, 
before Stephen Curry would go off for 30 in the second half, winning 82 to 76. Steph ended that game with 40 points. In the second round against Georgetown, Steph would again lead a comeback victory, matching up against the third seeded Wisconsin Badgers in the Sweet 16 with 24 year old LeBron James in attendance. Wisconsin had the nation's best defense and they only gave up 53 points per game. Steph ended up having 33 points himself, punching their ticket to the Elite Eight. Unfortunately, Steph and company ran into the eventual national champion in the Kansas Jayhawks, but to me, this is the greatest single player run in NCAA history. We also have five 11 seeds to ever have made the final four with zero of them winning their final four game. Four of these five teams are super interesting to me, so we're gonna dive a little deeper into their runs. With 1986 LSU being the one team we'll skip over. 2006 George Mason. I was nine years old when the Patriots made their Cinderella run, and I remember hints of it. They were coached by Jim Laranega, who's currently the Miami head coach. They were a balanced starting five that all averaged double digits, and most notably defeated the number one seed UConn in the Elite Eight, led by Rudy Gay. Up four with 11 seconds to go, George Mason would give up a floater and then miss the front end of a one and one UConn then comes down with a game-tying layup as time expires. In overtime, up 86-84, UConn would miss a corner three, sending the Patriots to the Final Four. 2011 VCU was the third 11 seed to make a Final Four, but the first to do so coming from the first four. Matter of fact, it was the first year the tournament had the first four. In the Sweet 16, they would defeat the Morris Twins-led Kansas Jayhawks before falling to the Butler Bulldogs in the Final Four. Then we have 2018 Loyola, a team that won its first three games by a grand total of four points. They would eventually fall to Jordan Poole, Duncan Robinson, and Mo Wagner of Michigan. And then finally, 2021 UCLA, who also came from the first four. Johnny Juzang led UCLA with 22.8 points per game in the tournament, and Jaime Jaquez balled out as well. Their final four game versus Gonzaga was one of the best games in recent memory. They would lose 93 to 90 in overtime on a Jalen Suggs deep desperation three that somehow banked in. As common as it is for a 12 seed to beat a five in the first round, surprisingly only two 12 seeds have ever made it to the Elite Eight, with none advancing to the Final Four. Firstly, the 2002 Missouri Tigers, coached by Quinn Snyder, former Jazz and current Hawks head coach. This team did start out 9-0 and and was ranked second in December before falling off a cliff. They then got it clicking when it mattered in March. And then we have the most random Elite Eight run of all time, in my opinion, 2020 Oregon State. The Beavers finished the regular season 17 and 13 with zero chance of making the NCAA tournament. But then they went and won the Pac-12 tournament, giving them an automatic qualifying bid. They propelled that momentum into the tournament, including defeating Cade Cunningham's four-seeded Oklahoma State in the second round on their way to the Elite Eight. A 13 seed has never made it to the Elite Eight, but it has to the Sweet 16 six times. The most recent being LaSalle in 2013. Now, most of these teams on this list you won't recognize, but in 1998, Valparaiso was one of these 13 seeds to make a Sweet 16. This Valpo team was led by Bryce Drew and is famous for the game-winning shot he had versus the four seed Ole Miss to put them into the second round. A fun fact is that Bryce is now coaching at Grand Canyon, a 12 seed in this year's tournament. 32 total 13 seeds have beaten a four in tournament history, most recently being Furman last year, when Virginia senior guard Kai Clark made one of the most ill-advised passes I've ever seen in March Madness history. We've had just two 14 seeds in tournament history make the Sweet 16. Chattanooga in 1997 and Cleveland State in 1986. Overall, only 22 14 seeds have won a game in March Madness. Most recently being Abilene Christian in 2021 and most famously 2015 Georgia State with RJ Hunter hitting one of the most memorable game winning threes over number three seeded Baylor. There have been 11 15 seeds to beat a two in March Madness history. Most recently just last season when the Princeton Tigers defeated number two Arizona. Princeton would actually make the Sweet 16 last year before falling to the Creighton Blue Jays. There's something oddly special about 15 seeds. I don't know what it is. From 1985 to 2012, only four 15 seeds won a first round game, including 93 Santa Clara when Steve Nash was a freshman. But in 2012, 
two 15 seeds beat number twos and something broke. Norfolk State led by Kyle O'Quinn and Lehigh led by CJ McCollum. The next season, Florida Gulf Coast would be the first to make a Sweet 16 and get the nickname Dunk City. If you don't remember, this team was absolutely electric. And then 2016, Middle Tennessee State. 2021, Oral Roberts, who went to the Sweet 16 as well and were led by the nation's leading scorer at the time, Max Acemas. They would almost beat third-seeded Arkansas to become the first 15 seed ever to make an Elite Eight but lost on a last second shot. You can catch Max in the tournament again this year as he is now the leading scorer for Texas, a seven seed in the 2024 March Madness bracket. If you've made it this far in the video, I know you've been waiting for this. There has in fact been a 15 seed to make an elite eight and it is none other than 2022 St. Peter's. Led by a balanced scoring trio of Daryl Banks, Casey Nadefo, and most famously, Doug Eddard. St. Peter's didn't have a player who played that was over six foot eight. They would defeat the 2022 player of the year, Oscar Shibwe and Kentucky in the first round. Number seven, Murray State, who was 31 and two that season and then the 2022 fifth overall pick, Jaden Ivey, sophomore Zach Eady, and number three Purdue in the Sweet 16. For 33 years, a 16 seed didn't beat a one, and some thought it would never happen. Because what you have to understand is 16 seeds are considered the six worst mid-major schools in the tournament. But in 2018, the barrier finally broke. 16 seed University of Maryland, Baltimore County beat the number one overall seed in the 2018 NCAA tournament by 20 points. Interestingly enough, Virginia would actually go on to win the whole thing the next season with large the same team which is a crazy story in its own but then last season something special happened again fairly dickinson became the second team ever to defeat a one seed in the ncaa tournament defeating purdue 63 to 58. what's interesting about fdu is they didn't even win their own conference tournament last season they lost by one point to merrimack who was ineligible due to transferring from Division II to Division I. Fairleigh Dickinson was a four-win team the year before, and it was their coach's first year as a Division I head coach. They were ranked the lowest of all 16 seeds, and they were dead last in the nation in average height. But after dominating a fellow 16 seed in the first four, head coach Tobin Anderson called his shot. He said, the more I watch Purdue, the more I think we can beat them. I don't have to remind you how bad the internet trolled this man after those comments, but look what happened. He was right, and as heartbreaking as it is, FDU would end up losing to Florida Atlantic in the second round, 78-70, marking no 16 seed to ever make a Sweet 16. So what do you think? Will a 16 seed ever make a Sweet 16? Will a 15 ever make a Final Four, or will we ever see a 15? seed make an elite eight again will there ever be a national champion that is lower than an eight seed or with nil do you think that the parity between the greatest teams and the lesser teams is just getting bigger and bigger in this sport all i know is that when it comes to march there are zero rules anything can happen and eventually given enough time everything probably will as I'm recording this, we are 24 hours away from the first four and 72 away from the first round on Thursday. This is one of my favorite sporting events of the year. It's one of my favorite times of the year. If you enjoyed the video, click on this video here. The YouTube algorithm thinks you'll like it. And although I mainly do NBA content, we will be doing daily recap videos for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of March Madness. So subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd look forward to those videos. And as always, we'll see you on the hardwood.